Welcome to Old Guy Tech. The OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 Hi, this is Rob Charney with Old Guy Tech TV, and this is Tech Wednesday. So today is all the, all things tech. Uh, actually, Jonathan has some software and uh, social network stuff that he's going to talk about. I've got some suggestions for Christmas since it's coming around around the corner. So why don't we just go go ahead, Jonathan? Why don't you start with your stuff and then we'll get to my Christmas list. Okay. Yeah, I just got the the invitation for the Alpha. Of, uh, is it Diaspora? Have you heard of it? Diaspora. I haven't. It's uh, it came out when Facebook was really starting to have all these issues. You know, they, they all these privacy issues. So it's this one's interesting. It's based off of uh, basically what you do is it's a, a you can actually download it, make your own hub of diaspora. Hub, okay. I get that's what they call or excuse me, they're they're termed pods. Okay. Um, and it's connected somehow to it. Um, it was dia diaspora. I God, I wish I'd know if that was right. Is intended to address privacy concerns related to centralized social networks. You know, basically, so instead of having all the servers all in one spot, you can have one in your house. You know, you can have one all over the place that interconnect with it, hmm. with the main servers apparently. It's actually it was a Kickstarter project, which is um, yeah. I told you about where I donated a couple of bucks to uh, a movie I want to see made. Right, right, right. It's the same company, but they raised over two hundred thousand dollars in a Kickstarter money. That must be nice. Um, and so I, I I got the I got the initial alpha release, and it's it's extremely similar to uh, very sim yeah, It's very similar to Google Plus. You know, instead of having the circles, they have a drop down menu when you select your who do you want your beat. To be, uh, you know, your friend. They have the acquaintances, friends tabs. You can make your own. Um, I made, I found somebody on there that I follow for as tech related. You know, so I, I, I created a technology tab. Um, yeah, they have the typical profile page, the you know, typical profile picture and page like Facebook. Um, you know, they have connections to software, to other pages like Tumblr, Facebook, Twitter. And I'm assuming they have an applications page. So I'm assuming that's for their mobile stuff, you know, like their, their iPhone, iPad, Android. Mm -hmm. um, it's very sparse. I mean, it's incredibly empty there. Well, it's new. So, so it's, it's you know, there's like... Because Google Plus really is still pretty sparse. Yeah. Yeah. But so this is interesting. So um, does everybody kind of create their own pod and then that feeds to the servers is that I, well i think what they're saying is you can if you want to control i guess your own your own destiny as far as your you know far as controlling what everything I, what a great idea um let's see what it it, it tells you who it's by I, I couldn't find out exactly what it is but basically it's allows users to set up their own servers or pod to host content pods can interact to share status updates photographs and right. other social data. It allows its users to host their data with a traditional web host, cloud-based, or ISP, or, or friends. The framework, which is being built, wow, it's a Ruby on Rails. I did not know it was that. It's free software and can be experimented with. The only thing I don't, I, I'm wondering if there's going to be any issues with it, uh, you know, with it being all over the place. Yeah. Well, um, you, well, I mean, fires are going to have any connectivity issues. I mean, if oh, you have a bunch of pods somewhere, what? How do they interact? Yeah. Well, you know, in theory, our military's kind of gone to something like this because, uh, and, and this is kind of a follow up on a very different scale. But if you don't keep everything in one central s site, just like you, you know, you have it in multiple places and they talk to each other. Basically, that's what the internet is with all the multiple data centers. So they're just putting it into a smaller scale. Uh, and letting each user control his own pod. If they want to. Yeah, well, okay, if they want to. Yeah, um, it would be interesting to see what happens. I'm, I'm wondering if there's just sign of some sort of, like, pod login, like, you you know, like an external login that, that plugs everything to it. Yeah. I mean, I want, I want to know how that actually works. Uh -huh. um, you know, there's the typical, you can log into Facebook, you know, download, you know, see if it, which friends, you know, check your friends list, download that, you could link it to... Facebook, so if you make an update on there, it goes to Facebook. Right. right. Um, it's extremely, matter of fact, the designs almost, either Google Plus ripped them off or they ripped off Google. Because huh. it's, and if you look at the page, I mean, there's, there's kind of a picture there on my notes. Mm -hmm. It's it's a dead-on ripoff. I mean, they have the little profile picture, you know, where it says, you know, your name and the little gear icon. Right. I mean, it has that whole thing right there. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, it's very similar. Wow. So uh, what's their URL? 
It's right now. I think it's joined Diaspora. It's it's a horrible name because I'll, it out, so. I'll never remember it. It's it's D I A S P O R A. It's D I A S P O R A. Yeah, it's a bad dot, name. Dot com. Okay. Yeah, it's joindiaspora.com. At least that's the the one I got. To. Okay. All right. Um, it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's early alpha. Oh, I want, I want to see it cause it's a different concept. I, I did send you a, uh, uh, you know, join this. Okay. I don't know if it's invitation only or not, but I did send you one. Okay. I'll look again for it. I didn't see it. I, um, you know, I, I've been so dug I'm busy. I haven't had a chance to check that out, but I do like the fact that I don't like the circles. I like the Facebook esque you know, s- uh, select where you want people to be via mm-hmm. like a, a drop down list. I think the, I personally think the circles is kind of. It just gets busy. Yeah, I, I'm a little confused with Google Plus uh, myself right now. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent certain that I understand <laughs> where they're going with it. Um, I know a lot of the pundits seem to really like it, and I guess it's different. But you know, we're still lacking numbers. You know, that's the advantage that Facebook has is it still has the majority of numbers. And if you're looking for somebody, that's generally where you go. So, in, um, so, so honest enough, I'm happy with Facebook. I mean, the privacy concerns I have to admit are are there. I'd love to be able to download everything at one shot. Right. Um, I think that the privacy is definitely a main thing. I think this is for people who want to, you know, are super worried about it. I mean, I think I wonder if you could make your own privatized pods. You know, have mm-hmm. two pods that aren't connected to the main. Well, I'll if you, you can what, do that, then you know, then that would be cool. Let's try messing around with it with old guy tech and see if we can come up with our own thing. I was trying to do that with uh, Google Plus as well. And by the way, for all those that that are followed LinkedIn, uh, which of course is a B two B social network itself, I did a join B two B and I, I, it hit everybody's email. And so if you if you're mad at me about that, I'm sorry. Otherwise, join LinkedIn. It's a, it's basically business to business, and that's there too. So now so now we've got another one to look forward to. And we as also well. have a Facebook page. Um, if you go to our website, the t h e o g t dot tv, there's a little link on the left hand side towards the middle. Just right. click on that, and that right. should take us to our uh, Facebook, Facebook page. Right. So that that'll be great. And uh, you know, if ever having trying to figure out how to raise revenue we will be having a donate button if you if you like what we're doing i hope you do we're trying um maybe a buck two bucks whatever something to help us out a little bit we'd really appreciate it so but that'll be up there soon um as you can see behind me we've kind of changed our logo now we're going with a little different look uh the top one was the uh old logo uh which we still use on our studio door and then we just designed a new one here recently, which is more a little retro, kind of more like what what, we're, what we really are all about. So uh, that's our new logo. So we've got that going too. Um, I I was going through, I believe it was PC Mac, PC Magazine or Zenit or something, and and it's Christmas time. So we're getting really near, real near to Christmas time here. So I thought, well, let's take a a few minutes and go over what uh, some of the Christmas items that uh, other sites are talking about, as well as some of my opinions. And um, I, I really think that uh, we're looking at um, the, the number one item that everybody wishes they're going to have for Christmas is the iPad 2. Uh, I think it's the hot item uh, for Christmas, but it's also the expensive item. Uh, you figure that the iPad 2 is usually about $499 and up, depending on which flavor you want to go with. So yeah, it's pricey, but it's still it's still the number one tablet. But uh, so you know, uh, if you got plenty of money and you want to spread it around, go ahead and get that iPad too. That'd be the way to go. You know, if you're looking for a budget t- uh, tablet, uh, Amazon's uh, Kindle Fire at around two hundred dollars is probably the next item. Uh, I understand that um, Amazon is having tremendous something like two million units in just a few weeks already being sold so it is a hot ticket there's no doubt about it and at two hundred dollars it's hard to argue with that's a that's a great uh, value uh, not a big fan of the interface the uh well i haven't even the kindle fire i actually got to see one it's basically it's a bookshelf right that's the whole thing i do not like that interface but that's my personal well, isn't it designed? It's designed mostly as a, as a book reader, right? So, well, no, it's, but, it, but, it's, it, but that's not what they that's not what they say. It. It's it's for the the Kindle, the regular Kindles, the book reader. They right. call this it's the the media consumption device. It's where you can get all your content from Amazon. You know, the movies, the music, the books. Right. That that's what the device is for. It's right. everything they sell. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to get one to to review. Um, 
we don't make enough money to do that yet. So if you've got one you want to send down for us to review, we'll, we'd appreciate it. So anyway, it, I've heard a lot of really good things about it. So uh, I think the Kindle Fire is also something to look at as well as the regular Kindle. Uh, great books if you're, if you're into reading books. Well, as far as oh, Kindle, um, I've heard that the touchscreen Kindle had, does have some issues. Um, far yeah, as the, I heard that too. The, yeah. the, the has issues as far as the touch, you know, the, the feel of the device. Heard it's a little slow. Mm-hmm. Um, the one I would stick to, just if you're going to get a, a Kindle, would be the regular Kindle. I've heard just the standard Kindle, you know, not the touch one. I've heard that's the one to go if you just want a straight book reader. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I've heard the same thing. But Which it, makes well, me sad because I wouldn't mind getting the touch, the touch one, but if it's that bad, I'm not, not going to get it. Well, and you can get it for you can get the regular one for seventy nine dollars with ads, but I've heard that the ads are not that bad. Yeah, that you can actually that that they're actually handy. Like you know, if you read a book, it's like, hey, if you read this book, you might like this, which I think is kind of cool. Right. And for eighty bucks, right, that's a hell of a steal. Yeah, I mean, for anything, eighty dollars is 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 an but I, I don't buy, think that so, I think that's I only know. Wi-Fi Whisper Sync. I don't think that's I don't think it that comes with a three G. Right. Which which for right. me on my original Kindle, I like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the only thing it came equipped with was the the like the three G or two G Whisper Sync. Right. Right. Well, it still works pretty good that way. So, so of course, smartphones are also the next big Christmas item. Everybody's looking at, uh, you know, if you're not looking at a tablet, you're probably looking at a smartphone of some type. And, of course, the iPhone 4S is still, uh, the you know, one of the most desirable smartphones out there. But I can tell you uh, my personal preference right now is the Droid uh, X2. I really like the site. And I like the way that particular unit works. So, and that's on Verizon. Uh, also, the new Galaxy is out or is coming out, and that uh, that's supposed to be quite a quite a unit itself too. And I haven't had a chance to see it, but it's supposed to be a big one. Um, so uh, HTC's got their uh, multimedia friendly um, Resound is what they're calling it. And what uh, is it? it? It's it's a smartphone. Oh, so it's a smartphone. Yeah, it's a smartphone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it it will come with the new. If it doesn't ship with uh, ice cream sandwich, it will. So it will will have the new um, Android OS. By the way, horrible name. Yeah, I know. But, resound. You know, resound. Oh, I, I sound. I think it sounds okay. It sounds like you're going to resound to buy another smartphone. <laughs> well, it's some people seem to buy multiples all the time. I don't know how they do it, but good for them. But uh, yeah, no joke. Yeah, really. But no, but the really is that a lot of the smartphones are really good out there. I really like mine because it's a little bit larger. Uh, as you see, I have to wear cheaters, you know, a little bit here to read. So it helps us uh, fifty five and older crowd anyway. Um, as the old guy tech, um, because the screen's larger, so it's a little easier to read. So that's why I happen to like that one myself. I, and I've also heard the Galaxy, the Samsung Galaxy, is also fairly large. It would be a good one for that. Going to say, if there's anybody out there that has the you know, the Windows Phone Seven, would you do us a favor and write us at the info at the ogt tv? Um, I have never seen one, and I don't know if it's on the list or not, but I personally, I, I want to hear somebody's real-life reviews of it. I know a few pundits happen to really like it, but I'd love to see some or hear some first-hand reviews. So just put Windows Phone sub, uh, Windows Phone 7 in the subject line and write to us at info at T-H-E-O-G-T dot TV. Thanks. Yeah, that'd be great. Any way of helping us out, we'd really appreciate it. So. Um, so there's uh, we've got there's so many phones out there. The, the reality is many of them are very good. Some of them are very lousy. But you know you, you're not going to go real wrong if you stick with the the, the majors, the HTCs. So is the, there a, a price range? Does it talk about like you know like what's the the price range? Because it, it seems like all the good phones you know with the two year plan are generally around two hundred dollars for all the top tier phones. What what they're saying is that uh, any of the phones subsidies could be anywhere from two hundred to four hundred dollars, depending on the phone and the plan that you go with and how long you sign up with the contract. So that's what you're looking at is between two hundred and four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. Yeah. With that subsidized price? Yeah. So some of these phones are getting pretty pricey. I couldn't tell you which one that is. I really want to know what phone that is because that's because the iPhone by itself without the contract is five hundred dollars or something like that. Right. Right. So well, but see, so what happens is it really depends on which. Oh, memory. uh, Yeah. The giga. I bet that's what it is. There's the memory. There's the speed. You know, it's on the four or three. And you know, so there's a number of things that might might make the price difference. I bet that's all regarding like the. 
the iPhone, if you want the 16 gigabyte or right. the 32 or whatever their latest and greatest flavor is. Yeah. I bet that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, probably so. But, you know, another great Christmas gift. So, you know, you can go with any of those. They're pretty good. You know what's hot today? Large, large TVs. The great big LED flat panel uh, televisions. 55 inch and up seem to be a, another big, big uh, Christmas item right now. And so there's... Uh, uh, Samsung's got a 55 inch LCD TV for $1,700, which is getting <laughs> pretty amazing how, uh, uh, price conscious that is. And then of course, uh, not everybody needs a, a 55 inch TV and there's the need for some of the smaller TVs, even the 32 inch TVs. And, you know, you can get some of the smaller, uh, flat screen L LED, uh, TVs for $300 or less. Yeah. Depending on when you buy it. So, and what it comes with, sometimes they don't have the fancy stuff like the new TVs do with, uh, built in Netflix and some of the other yeah, stuff. They don't have the but... widgets or some of them don't have the built in sensors. Right. I, th I think the one thing that some people don't understand is you can buy a TV that's too big for the room. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I think it was more prevalent back in the day when front projections or rear projection TVs were really popular, where you actually had a certain distance, like a minimum, maximum, where you could actually see what you're looking at. Right. But I, um, like my TV, I have a 47-inch Vizio, but where it is right now is the perfect size. Any bigger, you know, and you'd have to be moving your head. and you, know, it would yeah, be, you can't get far enough back from it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's true, but... You know, us guys, some of us like bigger is better, so not always, but in this case. I mean, if, if you're going to win, you got to get the 103-inch, uh, you know, reinforce the walls. <laughs> yeah, the, the whole thing, your whole wall is your television. That's going to be the next thing. Trust me. Well, they already have those, like, those projectors. You know, if, if you really want, you get the king, spend five, ten grand, get a projector, you can make up to seven to ten feet. It would not surprise me if the technology behind the Kindle Fire does not grow in size. So that it gets larger and larger and larger. And next thing you know, you have a wall that's basically the same thing as the Kindle Fire. And you just go up and touch your wall. And well, I mean, they have, well, they do have stuff like the Microsoft Connect they have for the Xbox that's based on, it uses three different cameras. Right. And it detects you that way. It, it, not to seem racist, but it oddly doesn't detect black people from what I've heard. Okay. And that's, well, that's, weird. that's a huge problem by itself, but. It's yeah. You know, I think it'd be cool, you know, if you have this little, just you know, buy the buy the projector, put this little thing on the wall, you know, if you don't, you know, just kind of go like this and scroll down, and yeah, it'd be like you know, it'd be cool. It'd be like four hundred, you know, Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit four fifty one, but hopefully with books. Yeah. Well, anyway, so it's going to happen. Trust me, it'll, it'll happen. What about Blu-ray? Is Blu-ray even in anybody's list anymore? If you don't have a Blu-ray Blu-ray Blu player. Obviously, get one now. Some of them are incredible. Uh, I mean, they come with all kinds of stuff. You can get a Blu-ray player with Netflix and Hulu. Some deals, you, some deals, you can buy a TV and you get a Blu-ray player. Yeah, there you go. I would recommend though that if you're going to buy a Blu-ray player, the first thing I would suggest getting is Band of Brothers. Never mind the Pacific. The Pacific, I personally didn't like it. But the Band of Brothers on Blu-ray is absolutely amazing. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Um. We'll the, try that one. the only thing you got to worry about with some of them is they, they, because of the way it was filmed, it wasn't filmed HD originally, so they try to upscale it. And some of the people look plasticky. Yeah. Like if you look on screen, it looks like you're looking at a Ken doll uh -huh. because, the, you know, the face is so stretched and oh, so shiny. Okay. Um, but Band of Brothers on Blu-ray is absolutely astounding. I mean, it looks like you're there with a handy cam. And, right, right. Oh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Right. And, um, you know, just so you, you know, John, neither Jonathan or I are big fans of the 3D TVs. Um, I can't they're, see them. They're not, um, they're not ready for prime time, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I've heard an awful lot of people get headaches after using them. Um, you know, do, do we, are we getting to a point where the technology, it's improving all along, but do we really need the 3D? I don't know. Anyway, at this point, my suggestion, don't buy uh, a 3D television. Skip that for now. Maybe five years down the road, if they really get the technology down and it, it works good, look at it then. But for right now, don't do that. Um, I think well, on the 3D, not to, you know, I think it'd be cool if I could actually see it. My problem is with my eyes, I can't see it. And I'm not, and I'm not alone. There's plenty of people who actually can't see 3D. Yeah, there, there's a number of people which, who can't. Yeah. Which to me, on the, the positive side, it's cheaper. You know, friends want to go see a 3D movie. You know, I'm out 30 bucks or how much it costs. But yeah. You know, for me, I don't mind. I wouldn't see 3D in movie theaters anyways because generally it's a gimmick. Generally, it doesn't add to the movie, which to me is if you're going to if you're gonna do a 3D movie, it has to add to it. Otherwise, what's the reason for doing it? If it's not something that 
actually, you know, if it's part of the story. Um, I've heard some stuff. I heard, like, the Batman Begins when it was on. Only parts of it are in 3D. Yeah. If you go to see it in IMAX and only part of it is in 3D, what's the purpose? Yeah, I don't know. So it's it's Crazy. still a gimmick. It's, it, you know, it's like Jaws 3D or whatever you call it, with a guy poking the screen. It's it's lame. What about the Force in full high D, uh, HD for Star Wars? I think they're, you know, at 90 bucks for um, the whole thing, that's a, that's a pretty good deal. Um, you want my personal opinion? Sure, on it? what's your personal opinion? I wouldn't buy, I own Star Wars and DVD. I wouldn't buy it. If you don't already own Star Wars on DVD, if then buy it. If you own it, don't. Because it's not going to be, it's not a big deal. Unless it includes the original theatrical unedited release, then I would consider buying it. Otherwise, don't. I mean, I, I know people have bought multiple copies on DVD. It's 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 time to stop, you know, paying for Lucas's stuff because he's releasing the same thing over and over and over again. And he's just making more and more money. I mean, he's worse so. than Disney. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm not, and by the way, I'm not biased. I like Star Wars, but this is <laughs> I want the original release. I'm I'm tired of this edits. George, don't get mad at us. We'd love we'd love to have you as one of our supporters. <laughs> oh no! Well, don't get me wrong. Some of his movies are amazing. He he did Indiana Jones four. I mean, yeah. the, oh, the, no, the no, Indiana yeah. Jones movie. Yeah. I, I like him as a director, yeah. but I just have you know, I just am a little opinionated about Star Wars. Well, that's okay. I, mean, I, I really like it, I, but I don't own it, so I'm not. You know, unfortunately, it sounds funny, but I'm not a big movie watcher. I don't sit in front of movies every day and and watch movies like some I people do. And Jonathan do. does, and there's a lot of people that do. I'm just not one of those. I I do other stuff. Um, well, we talked about the tablet. So one of the things we need to talk about, of course, is the, uh, the the computers. Now, everybody, of course, is going for the littlest, the lightest, the thinnest, the Mac Air, whatever it may be. Well, they have the new uh, in Ultrabooks and yeah, the, the PC side. Yeah, the Ultrabooks. Um, you know, those are all nice if you want a really small uh, notebook and you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of power and pizzazz and well, stuff you can the, go with that i'm not to cut you off but the benefit of those if you're a sales guy yeah and all you do is travel with a 10 pound computer or whatever the standard notebooks i mean that's that's a lot of the you know yeah, it, saving if, again if that's, it really if that's doesn't what, you what do. you're doing yeah it, it really does I, they're nice yeah they're easy but you know what my opinion at this point is the ipad's the killer for those little ultra books and there's some uh, I want to want to review a new uh actual this is very interesting i saw it, it goes onto your ipad and it's a little rubber membrane that goes right on your iPad. Feels like a, a, a keyboard. That when that when when the the buttons slide up, you put this over it, and you can actually type like a regular. Because they have on keyboard it. cases. Oh, this thing's really neat. I mean, this is sweet. This is a rubber membrane. It goes right where the keyboard hmm. would be. It, it's a neat neat thing, and uh, maybe we'll get a chance to review that. I'd love to have that myself. Interesting. But that's going to be the killer for the I think for the little air books and the smaller stuff. Why you know why mess with that? Go ahead and get yourself um, uh, an iPad or something. So. Um, but you know, on the big side, on the large side computers, the powerful ones, um, I'm a big fan of the Dell XPS, uh, notebooks. I have an older one here that's three years old that I absolutely love. It, it, it it's limited now on, as to what it can do. I can't get all the video editing and, and everything else that I want to do with a laptop in it anymore. But if I was in the market, uh, and if you're in a market for, um, a high end, high power, a notebook Dell's XPS models in 15 or 17 inches is uh, an incredible computer. So uh, easily a desktop replacement and one that trust me you'll you'll absolutely love. See, I still so want. That's a good one. I want a new MacBook Pro. Oh, go go get one. If I had the money. Okay. So I mean, because that that's a high end one has enough overhead to do video editing, but that's that's my choice because I I like Mac laptops. Yeah, because I'm a klutz, and so far the Mac, my MacBooks, the only one I haven't managed to destroy. Yeah, well, that's good. That's fine. Anyway, so you know, it's it's what you like. If you're in the Mac, get one of the new Mac PowerBooks, whatever they call them. I'm sorry, and then uh, if, <laughs> <laughs> and if in your in in for a really uh, uh, a racehorse of a uh, laptop, uh, the the Dell XPS series, that's their top of line series. Uh, I would suggest that highly. Um, not only is that the top of line series. But if you have a technical problem, you've got a special phone line and a special agent to talk through. So uh, that is the high end stuff. And That's if you have kind problems, of discerning, though. well, no, it means well, you're no, paying. Well, for... no, but when I when I, I I bought an XPS, the XPS two desktop, right? And I went from some guy in India to like some surfer dude in California, yeah. Which which to me was like, 
can I have the India guy back? Oh, okay, well. Because I could understand him a lot more. I, I don't know. I, I really, the little bit of tech support that I've needed with mine has been great. So it's amazing, I think, though. I think the, the, the service is, is the just. The XPS just, service is yeah, pretty amazing. It is. They do a great job, and I'm a big Dell fan. So that that's a good choice for your Christmas list if you're looking for uh, full-time, full-power uh, laptops. Um Game consoles, of course, are always a big um, Christmas issue. You know, everybody wants their game console, so we've got uh, we've got the big ones, right? We have the Xbox 360, uh, PlayStation 3, and the Wii. Is is that is that the big three? Yeah, um, I would wait. Allegedly, the new Wii is supposed to be out. They showed it last year at CES, mm -hmm. so it might be out next year. Allegedly, the new Xbox is going to release 2012 or 2013. Um, the Xbox is five, six years old by now. Right. Um, if it's, if, you know, if you got red ringed and you want to replace it, I'd say go with one of the new ones. Um, if you don't have one, you know, I don't know. I mean, what that, about PlayStation three? It's the newest out of the group right now. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, yeah. that one, I, I'm personally an Xbox fan, um, because I love Microsoft products. Um, I've had Playstations in the past, just wasn't a big fan. Um, I would still say go get for the Xbox. There's these really killer bundles now. You can get like uh, like the Modern Warfare editions or the Guilds of Wars edition that generally come with more stuff and a game. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I think I would get it. I mean, if you don't have an Xbox and you really want one, I say, you know, that'd be way to go. Yeah. Um, so it's what you prefer. Yeah. But anyway, but just just gonna let you know, you know, the, 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 at least the Xbox and I know the yeah. Wii are coming close to their, their end of life cycle. So they're going to be a new one out in a couple of years. So just keep that in mind. Right, right. So if you look at it that way, the Sony PlayStation would be the one to go with right now. Uh, the, it's the benefit. It's of the, also the most expensive. At this well, the point. benefit about the PlayStation is it does have a Blu-ray player. Right. That is updated frequently. Right. Um, I'm hoping the new Xbox, when it comes out, you know, the 720 or whatever they're going to call it, I'm hoping it has uh, Blu-ray. Because I have games that require two discs. Some apparently are coming out with three because they're using DVDs. Right. So. Um, if you have, you know, like if you get a Blu-ray disc that's on a game, I mean, that's considerably, that's handy instead right. of having to get up and change it. But. Right. Well, that's kind of neat. So anyway, of course, game stations, PlayStations are, are good Christmas gifts. Uh, digital cameras. You know, I could speak probably for hours uh, on digital cameras. And, you, you know, you go everywhere from a little $80 digital cam camera up to all, of, all the way up to the $10,000 plus uh, Canon or Nikon uh, full uh, full format uh, digital cameras. It depends on your price point on it. Um, they're great. Uh, yeah, the, the the camera in your phone is handy, but if you're going to be serious about shooting digital, uh, you really need to get yourself an SLR and get some good lenses and spend micro the money four, and do it. Micro so. four was it? Micro four thirds or three quarters? It's the it's like an SLR camera but in a mini body. Right. Yeah, those are one I want one personally. Yeah, there's Cause, some, there's cause some, some of them, new ones out there because some of them you can use with an adapter. You can use full size glass. Right. I mean, right. it's it. Some of them don't have. It's not exactly the, the greatest quality. It's not like you know giant SLR, but it's an SLR and a mini body. It's a little more compact. Right. Instead of carrying you know a giant you know Canon Mark you know five fifty D or whatever it is. Right. Right. No, I I know, and and it's what you prefer. Uh, what you want to lug around. Now we're used to lugging around big video cameras and. Uh, so to me, it it, uh, it wouldn't matter, but uh, you know, it really depends on what how much you want to lug around. Some of the small, the real small little um, uh, cameras that are out now are in 12, 14, 16 megapixel, megapixels. Uh, unbelievable quality now that you get out of these cameras. So most of them are pretty good. But the, no, again, another great Christmas gift is is those SLRs. So that that's a good one too. Trying to get through this list. What else we got here? We've got um, hey, uh, Apple TV and Roku. Why don't you tell me a little bit what you know about them? Because those could be great. Christmas I have gifts. one of the versions of Roku. Um, Roku's cool. I mean, they have channels for you know, Netflix. Uh, you know, all the latest and greatest stuff. Hulu Plus. I like net. I like you know. I happen to like it. My version, I guess, is getting a little long in the tooth because I'm having issues with Netflix. Um, Apple TV, I'm not a big fan of because right now there's no apps for it. You know, you can't go in the app store and use, you know, what you, you know, like your, if you bought like a, an app for a music station, you can't use that on the, there. Um, you can stream from your computer, by, you know, back and forth. I know very little about the Apple TV. Apple TV. Yeah. I love my Roku yeah. box, though. I use it all the time. 
Yeah, yeah. Mainly so. when I'm playing video games because I have it on my other TV. But I, I happen to love the Roku box. It's easy. It's handy. Um, you know, and for the Christmas gift list, they're fairly inexpensive. You're yeah, looking the, the at top of the lines, fifty bucks to the uh, top of the lines, a hundred dollars, hundred dollars, and uh, you know, so fairly inexpensive, neat technical gift for somebody for Christmas. So look and at those. I mean, the, the best the, thing, the best thing about them is if you have like an older parent or an older family member, after you set it up, it's super simple. I mean, there's basically really no. After the basic setup and you set up Netflix and all that, it's super simple. So I don't have to keep calling you and asking you how to pick, turn something on? You can. I might not answer. <laughs> okay. You're supposed to be the old guy tech. <laughs> I know I am. I'm just giving Jeez. you a time. We help each other. It's a, it's a team effort here. Uh, I've got mixed reviews. One, one of the, one of the uh, magazines thought a great, a great Christmas gift for... Um, for Christmas is the C Steve Jobs autobiography, and I've read it. Uh, I, I bought it uh, on, uh, on Kindle when it came out, and uh, I read it. Um, it, it. Interesting enough, if you really want to know a little bit of Steve Jobs, the beginning part of the book is great. He really gets into uh, you know how it started, his relationship with Waz, with in 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 on the unfortunate side of all the drugs that he did, including LSD that he did a lot of, and it talks a lot about that, which I didn't know the beginning of, of, of how Steve started and, and what's going on that. So you know, I'm still talking about that, but it really left me, and I'll do a little review of the book now, it kind of left me empty, and in some respects, um, a little angry. Um, I don't know, it was uh, just a real, eh, but... If you're really in the jobs and you want to know how Apple was run and what he did behind the scenes, eh, go ahead and get so it. So not that would to be a good not thing. to spoil the book for you, but what 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 about it kind of left you feeling empty? Was it because you know realizing that Jobs might not have been the the nicest guy? I mean, spoil alert here, just to, to warn you. But well, I think to be honest, I think Jobs actually died before the end of the book was to be written. I think there was more to the story or what he was going to hope to do. Um, and I don't want to be a spoiler. I don't want to give away what's in the book. But I really loved the beginning of the book in the middle. But from the middle to the end, I thought it really lost it. And um, you really got to see the ugly side of Jobs. And there's a lot of people that uh, just cherish the ground he walks on. Uh, not me. I was not a friend of Jobs. Even after this re reading this book, I'm I was definitely not a friend of Jobs. Uh, I don't believe people should be treated the way he treated people, but that's my opinion. He obviously was successful. He's the multi-billionaire. I'm certainly not. So whatever worked for him worked for him. So, And then, you know, uh, the last few things I can suggest for Christmas would probably be things like gifts, gift cards. Gift cards are always good. Best gift buy. cards are great. Uh, you know, the electronic stores, uh, fries, um, whatever you want, want on that. Those those are always good. Uh, there's some Bluetooth headphone stuff and some Bluetooth stuff that's coming out. Just pretty neat, you know, and that works really well. Again, uh, low-end price stuff. There's uh, maybe noise-canceling headsets. Maybe something like that would be uh, a good Christmas item there. I was going to say, if somebody's looking, in, looking for a gift for somebody that's a Bluetooth headset... Um, if you don't mind one that's expensive, I'd recommend anything by Jawbone. Right. I have. I don't remember the name of it, but I have one that's li it's literally it's about this big. You stick it in your ear. There's nothing around the ear. Right. Because I have glasses, anything that around the ears generally um, doesn't fit very well right. or comes off easily. Right. This one, you literally just jam in your ear, twist a little. It's it's very light. You don't feel it. I, I happen to love it. It's 120 bucks or something like it's that, which, which is really expensive. Yeah. It's really small, so you can lose it. Yeah. Um, but I love it. Well, good. It's the only Bluetooth heads, a headset thing I've ever had that actually fits, and I can use it regularly. Yeah. See, I hate those things. You know, you go into – we John and I one time decided we were going to go down to Fry's, and we're going to visit. We made a bet to see how many of the guys all had something plugged in their ear off on a Star Trek, and we decided after our count that uh, two-thirds of everybody inside that technical store was wearing a Bluetooth device. And those are just the employees. <laughs> and the sad part is is people are talking to themselves, or at least that's what it looks like. You know, in my day – when I grow up, somebody's walking down the uh, an aisle of a grocery store or something, talking to themselves. They were kind of, you know, you stayed away from them. Now you don't know who they're talking to. So, but anyway, there was my Christmas list. Uh, maybe I'll come up with more for you. Uh, you know, you, if you've had some ideas, email us and we'll talk about them as well. So, anyway, 
thank you for uh, uh, coming to our show. This is Tech Wednesday. I'm Rob Charney. This is Jonathan Charney over here. Thank you for coming. Have we'll a good see day. You soon. Hi, this is Rob Charney with Old Guy Tech TV, and I want to talk to you today about Windfall. Windfall has two outstanding offers for you to take advantage of. They have their 12-week business-only ad for just $60. That's just $5 a week. You're not going to find a better deal anywhere. Windfall has a rewards program like no other, a real windfall. Give us five and your ad is free. So refer five people or businesses and you get your ad for free. Visit Windfall on the web at www.shopthewindfall.com or call 530-621-1698. Everybody needs a Windfall. Thank you, Windfall. See you soon.